The Lord be with you. Grace and peace to everyone in the name of Jesus Christ. We welcome you this morning to worship here at Broadway Baptist Church. And I'm so grateful to be gathered here in the house of the Lord with you all. And we wish to welcome you all, whether you are here in person in this beautiful sanctuary or in all of the sanctuary of the earth. We like to speak of ourselves as one beloved Broadway, and we are so glad that you are with us. Uh, we hope that you have had a good and happy Thanksgiving, and if you are visiting among us, we welcome you today. My name is Ryan Price, and I'm the senior pastor here, and we are just so delighted to have you among us. We like to say that we are a church of both extraordinary worship and also extravagant hospitality, and I pray that you will find both of those things with us today as we come into the house of the Lord to worship God together. A warm welcome to you all. Inside of the order of service, if you are visiting with us, there is something called the life of the church, which you can access. It gives a little information about our congregation, our vision and mission statement, along with also a QR code, which you can access to receive a little more information about our church. Uh, that's a good way to dip your toe into Broadway, and we're just so very glad that you are with us this morning. It is uh, a wonderful weekend as uh, many of us have gathered with family and with friends, and I look out and see many among us who uh, are numbered amongst uh, family and friends gathered for the weekend, so we wish to welcome you all. And in the spirit of what we call extraordinary hospitality, I invite the congregation this morning to stand, if able, and greet one another with signs and words of Christ's peace. Today is a special day in our congregational life. One, it is the last day of the Christian calendar, the Sunday that we call the uh, Christ, uh, the Reign of Christ Sunday, and the Sunday where we sort of think on Christ as the judge of all history, the one who stands at the end, seated at the right hand of God for whom uh, all authority has been bestowed. And so, uh, that is one thing, and then in addition to that, we are very honored this, this morning to have a special preacher among us today, and that is Brittany Washington, who is one of our two interns here at Broadway. Brittany is a student at Bright Divinity School and is also a social worker and is interning here in uh, the life of Broadway as an intern for both congregational care and also social justice. And so we are so delighted to have uh, Brittany with us. We wish to welcome some of her family members who are also here, and we're looking forward to an exciting day. Uh, because she's preaching, that means I'm giving the children's sermon this morning. So uh, we'll see how that goes. I have forsworn fire or anything like that, uh, but, uh, but I'm very much looking forward to speaking to the children and uh, really all of God's children, and that is all of you. So we come into this space uh, mostly full from a long, uh, glorious weekend, and uh, we come now to center ourselves, to think uh, about the world, to think about Christ, Christ's place in it, and our place before Christ as well. And so May we come with a sense of peace, uh, trusting that God is at the end of history and that Christ is trustworthy on the throne of all of these things. So as we come now into this place, let us center ourselves, let us be at peace in our hearts. Let us welcome the Christ that comes with one another. And let us begin to prepare ourselves for this hour of worship as I say unto you, lift up your hearts.
Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Know that the Lord is God. Enter the Lord's gates with thanksgiving and the courts with praise.
God, we gather together to sing your glories. Awake our souls and so that we might shout the heavenly anthem of you dying and living so that death may die. As we crown you the Lord of love and life through our worship, may our praise never end. On this reign of Christ Sunday, the last Sunday of the Christian calendar, help us to reflect on this past year. As we began the church seasons with the anticipation of the birth of the Christ child, we now end the seasons declaring the reign of Christ. On this day, we celebrate the fulfillment of the revelation of your own self in Christ. On this day, we claim your promise that through the powerful name of Jesus, the world is being transformed through your love. We have listened, reflected, experienced in worship, and tried to live out the redemption story. And here we have arrived, face to face, with your triumphant presence. And we declare once again that Jesus Christ is Lord of all and pledge that Christ will reign as Lord of our lives. in just a little bit closer. I know a lot of your friends are traveling this weekend, so we want to uh, make it look like we've got a critical mass up here. Good morning. Did you all have a happy Thanksgiving? Yes, yes. yes? You, you did. Your smile is big. I, you must have had a happy Thanksgiving. Did anybody eat a lot of turkey? Yes. I did. Yes. Dressing? Pumpkin pie? Raise your hand if you ate pumpkin pie. Yeah. You had pie, pecan pie? Uh, you can't have it. Yeah, okay. Some of y'all had a. Did, Jack had coconut cream pie. That sounds pretty good right there. And I had some of your grandmother's cookies this week, in fact, and they were good too. <laughs> uh, did any of y'all's folks take a long nap on the couch on Thursday? Anybody have a, have a long nap? No, they didn't. Well, they need a nap. They, what's that? You fell asleep on the couch? Oh, good. I, after all that turkey, we need that. So that's good. Yeah, too many people to take a nap. All right. Well, I'm glad you had a happy Thanksgiving. This morning, I wanted to talk. Uh, this is the what's called Reign of Christ Sunday, when we talk about, you know, Jesus kind of being the judge of all history and at the end of history when all the things that we've done or haven't done uh, are laid before God. And this morning I, I wanted us to think a little bit about, of all things, bullies. Bullies. Bullies at school or bullies in our neighborhood. Y'all know what I mean when I say bullies? Yes. Yeah. Now, I want you to think of one in your mind. Just don't say any names. We don't, no names, but do you, can you think of maybe a bully that's in your neighborhood or, no, don't say any names. Don't. You know, mean people, mean folks, folks that are nasty, think, folks that push people around, say unkind things to people. Can you think of one? Maybe some, somebody like that. We, a lot of us have bullies in our, in our lives from time to time. Even adults have bullies, but, but when I was a kid, there was a bully at my school. And the bully was mean and nasty and big and ornery and cruel and unkind to everybody, tried to beat up everybody. And her name, <clears throat> no, I'm not gonna tell you her name. I, I said we weren't gonna say any names. 
But she was nasty and mean and mean-spirited. And do you know that the Bible tells us that even in Bible days, they had bullies? Yes, in the Bible, they had bullies. Lots, if you read your Bible, and I know you do, uh, they had lots and lots of bullies. And you know what they called them? They called them goats. Yes, goats. And there were sheep and there were goats. And sheep were like real nice, kind of docile animals. What do sheep do? I like that. It's very good. They, and they, they, what do they eat? They kind of graze around. What, they eat. What do they eat? Grass. grass. Yeah, they eat the grass. And do they harm anybody? No, they're kind of unto themselves, right? So kind of doing, yeah. And then, and then uh, but then goats. Anybody ever been around a goat? We've been around a few goats before Bo and I. Goats are, what are goats like? They eat everything. They, eat everything. they want it all, don't they? And they will push you out of the way. Yeah, once I pet one and it, and it like, it, it, raised its horns. Oh, you tried to pet one and it, it, it put its horns at you? It was in a petting zoo. It was in a petting zoo. That, goats should not be at petting zoos. That, that's the 11th commandment in the Bible right there. So Jesus tells this story, you're going to hear it later on, where at the end of all time, all of the, uh, Jesus is standing there and it says that Jesus separates the sheep from the goats and all the, all the sheep are over here on the right and all the goats are on the left and he kind of separates them. So the sheep, be the sheep over here. What do the sheep do? Show me. Just kind of grazing, minding your own business. What? Let me see the goats. Y'all snarl at these sheep over here. Yeah. Jack, let me see your snarl. Oh, that's scary. So at the end of history, the Bible says the, sheeps are going to be, the sheep are going to be separated from the goats. And we want to be where? We want to be on the side of the sheep. Yeah. And so we can think about those bullies. What can we do to be on the side of the sheep? Okay, go ahead. Oh, I love that. We can say, hey, to, to the goat, I don't like that. That's good. If, if it's safe to do that, that's a good thing to do. Go ahead. I'll come back to you. Please stop. That's another very good one. When we see somebody being bullied by one of the goats, what else can you say? What's that? Stop being rude. That's in the Bible too. Yes. Stop beating him up. Stop beating him up. Okay, go ahead. Uh, you can just ignore, them. ignore them. Sometimes you can ignore them, it, but if it gets really bad, maybe, maybe you know, if it's beyond our control, what we should we do? Exactly. Exactly. If if it's beyond our control, something we can't handle or something we don't feel safe handling, right? We can tell an adult. But the whole idea of the story is that Jesus, too, is on the side of the sheep. Yes, standing up against bullies. So if you want to be on Jesus' side, we take a stand against bullies and we try to make it safe for all of the sheep. That's a good word, isn't it? Is that a good word? Annie? Okay, good. I think it is. We'll say a prayer and then uh, y'all will head back and then I want you to be listening to that story and when we read it in the Bible, when you hear about the goats, make the face, okay? Lord, we give thanks for all of these children and I pray that as they are growing up here, they would understand, come to understand your love for the sheep and that they could develop the courage to be on your side, on the side of care, sanctuary, love, safety, welcome, and shalom. We pray all of these things in Christ our Lord's name. And together all of God's people do say, amen and amen. Thank you all.
A reading from the epistle, the book of Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
pray with me? God of the lost and lonely, God of the secure and confident, gather us into your loving arms today as we worship together. You have been with us all during the year as we walk the pathways of hope with Jesus. From your incarnation in Christ at the Nativity to his acceptance of the ministries to which you called him. From the magnificent lessons about caring and compassion, from the encounters with hostile people to the cries of those in need and to his crucifixion and resurrection, we have learned from his example and our lives have been transformed by his redeeming love. Bring the joy of this day into our hearts. Flood our lives with your words of hope and give us delight at serving you by serving others. Bless this church as we grow and continue to learn what you would have us do. Cause us to be a haven of peace and hope in this world that is bound in such anger and fear. Amen. The Old Testament lesson from Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and I will bring them into their own land, and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed the flank, pushed with flank and shoulder, and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until they scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between the sheep and the sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Good morning. So today I'll be reading from Matthew 25, verses 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the glory on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it to me. And then he will say to those at his left hand, you who are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not we take care of you? And then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into the eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the gospel of grace. Thanks be to God. So today my sermon is titled, Who Are You With? And so I want to start the sermon off by telling you what this isn't about, what it's not going to be. This sermon isn't about guilt tripping you into a frenzy laundry list of endless charitable acts to remain in the good graces of God Almighty, but to a small degree, kind of is. <laughs> so please don't misunderstand me. We still have the grace of God that understands our hearts and tensions and gets the day-to-day -day struggles that we face as human beings with stressful jobs and busy school schedules, chaotic families, crying kids, and commitments to ourselves. However, this sermon is meant to challenge us to think again about public matters we failed to take action on. God cares for those who are unhoused, those sick without health insurance or suitable health care, as well as those who are being terrorized or killed due to their race, religion, identity, ethnicity, and so on. And God is concerned about those who aren't actively concerned about all those mentioned. He cares that we aren't in solidarity with others, and it troubles him that we lack action in displaying our concern. In today's text, God intentionally positions himself as each one of these persons to say that my presence and my identity are with the least of these. So however way we choose to show up for those in hardship, know that God cares. He cares so much that he is already in radical solidarity with them. He even uses this text to question why we weren't there for him. Our inaction makes God question our character, something which he should never feel made to do. He proceeded to ask where were we 
when he was hungry, and did we feed him? And what about when he was homeless? Did we offer him community and support? And how about the time when he was in jail? Did we visit him? Or when he was without protection in the face of a predator, did we shelter him? When he looked different from you and I, did we identify with him? And when he was judged, did we stand up for him? And were we friends in doing so? This sermon is for those who aren't in solidarity with the sheep. And according to the text, if we aren't in solidarity with the sheep, then we are with the goats. And to give further context of who the goats are, their objective is self-seeking, and they care only about their own access to power, land, and money. They find satisfaction in seizing money from those poverty-stricken and already enduring back-breaking labor. When I think of the goats, I think about the people who are sitting in positions of power to liberate people, but instead, they choose to oppress them. And to put this imagery in real time with the sheep and goats in action, I am reminded of the recent outcome of the county commissioner's courthouse meeting this summer and the decision to take away $31 million from social programs, including food, public health, and child care assistance for low-income Tarrant County residents. Money that could have helped families and communities to build a brighter future for themselves. A substantial portion will now instead be used to support exclusive incomprehensible police training, as well as the expansion of the prison industrial complex, populated mostly by those with significant trauma, mental health disorders, and or poverty and goes on. In this case, the sheep were the ones whose livelihood was being stripped away from them, and the goats were those who were using their power to do so. In relation to those in solidarity with the sheep, their sentiments, they were genuinely with the sheep, but their inaction aided the agenda of the goats. Those who were involved, particularly those who were in support of the sheep, you heard their voices, you saw their faces, you saw their social media posts, and you saw their love, many of which are sitting here in this congregation today. The ones who stood out most to me includes voices like Meryl Glasscock, who said to a judge in a courtroom, how in the world can you even think about voting to defund already promised funds? And then you have Mr. Burnham who said, we're supposed to be visiting those in jail and you guys are doing the exact opposite. And lastly, I'm reminded of Pastor Ryan Price who said, how much more wrong is it to take the scraps that belong to the children and use them to feed the twin beasts of mass incarceration and corporate privatization? Such courageous voices who shared their oppositions to the matter will receive their reward in heaven and on earth. And with reflection on the actions of the goats and those in solidarity with the goats, scripture speaks clearly of the pending judgment we shall receive from God should not our actions change or begin. Today, I ask what do we have to say about the ongoing tragedies occurring to the sheep, much of which is still awaiting our response and action. These matters include racial injustice and police brutality, the food deserts, or shall I say food apartheid here in our city, unequal education, the unfair health care system that favors the rich over the poor, affordable housing being difficult for, to find, gender-based wage inequality, the harsh treatment of LGBTQ plus folks, and many more. Such issues can be addressed through self-inquiry, education, and the shifting of ill-informed mindsets, corporate responsibility initiatives, conscious capitalism and investments, community involvement, charitable donations, political advocacy, social protesting and marching, amplifying the minority voices um, and businesses, and such in support of the sheep. 
while engaging in such acts of kindness, keep in mind that our Savior is working alongside us. God's presence is with the disadvantaged, marginalized, and vulnerable communities. It is with the least of these that Jesus spent much of his time with during his ministry on earth. Being that he also was from a poor upbringing, he carried the identity of the marginalized within himself. So in addition to Jesus working alongside them, he also identifies with them, which I believe shows emphatically just how much he understands, values, and loves them. I can see him now calling him his people. So in closing, if we want to find ourselves with God, then we need to center ourselves with those most impacted by the pain of this world. And the way that we find God is for ourselves to be in solidarity with the sheep. God most desperately wants his children to be in unity and solidarity with one another, which requires also having a deep understanding and empathy towards those misunderstood, misrepresented, and mistreated by our unfair and cruel society. With that deep understanding, we must also take action. As Dr. Angela Davis best describes it, in a racist society, it's not enough to be non-racist. We must be anti-racist. Because neutrality is yielding to the dominant forces of evil. And since there is no middle ground, we have to take a stand. And as Jesus did for us in his own solidarity with humanity, so we must also do for others. And lastly, with encouragement to those in prevailing solidarity with the sheep, Know that our contributions to the kingdom of God have not gone unseen, unheard, nor without return. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest, one that includes justice and joy for all of God's children. Amen. As Brittany was preaching, I was thinking about this being the last Sunday of the Christian calendar year, which means that next week begins Advent, the first Sunday in the new calendar year, and the time in which we begin to think on the meaning of in incarnation, which is God's solidarity with humanity in the flesh. And this last Sunday and that next Sunday stand as kind of uh, hinge pin, uh, linchpins of history where we think on what it means for Jesus to come and live among us as a human being, to live in solidarity with those who are suffering, being born in a place like Israel, Palestine uh, in that time, 2,000 years ago, and all of the cycle of history and the end where we are told that Jesus says what well, we should already know that he will be with the sheep and we are called to be with him. So Brittany has given us this invitation, 
Who are you with? I think that is a good question for us all to consider as we enter uh, this new year. Who do we want to be with? Whose side are we on? Where is Christ? And how can we be with him? The invitation comes today to, of course, join the church. The doors of the church are open and I'll be happy to receive anyone who would wish to come down, is able to walk down and join us. But the invitation really comes for all of us to consider this question. Who are we with? Who do we want to be with? Who is Christ with? And how can we be with him? That is the invitation for us all to consider. Let us all in our own ways this morning respond.
the laughter of the children and our meaningful relationships, as well as those relationships that give us stress, we give thanks for our own life breath, for the abundance so many of us enjoy, and for the ones who we share this abundance, for the roof over our heads, the clothes on our backs, for our health and our wealth of blessings, we give thanks. For this opportunity to gather together, for the freedom to pray these words without fear in any language, in any faith, in this great country whose landscape is as vast and beautiful as her inhabitants. We thank you, God, for giving us all of these. Amen.
wish to thank again Brittany Washington for this word of encouragement this morning. You did a fine job and we're grateful for uh, your words and your work here as well. So God bless you. And uh, Brittany's husband, spouse, uh, Lamont, is with us today along with other family members. And so uh, we're pleased about that. And we hope at the conclusion of the service, uh, Brittany will be joining me out in the uh, Narthex. I think it's cold out there. We may not step all the way out. Uh, so we'll be inside the door uh, uh, where it's safe and warm. So uh, we're really grateful for that. This is big, the beginning of the busy, busy season for us. Um, this afternoon at 1.30, there is a service of comfort and healing to take place in the Fleming Chapel. Uh, this is a service that is really intended for those who may be struggling over the holidays, maybe have experienced a loss, uh, someone who, as some of us do, just struggling with the darkness of the time, uh, this is a space not to fix all that, but to name it and to allow it to be and to say that it belongs to in the house of the Lord. So I look forward to that service. Uh, I will be bringing a brief meditation. I think it will be personally meaning for me, meaningful for me having uh, just experienced the holiday for the first time without uh, my father around. So... I hope um, if that could be meaningful to you that you might go off, have lunch, and come back as quickly as you can. Wednesday night we have the hanging of the green. Our children lead us. We'll have the tree up. A beautiful, beautiful time. Um, it's always done. Not, not always, you know, uh, the way that they would do it in the department store, uh, but always done with uh, joy and with love, and it's a fun service. And so we hope that you will be with us for that. And then, of course, next Sunday, as I said, begins the Advent season. Messiah Sing is the first Sunday of the Advent this year, December 3rd. So next week, Messiah Sing, uh, we're very much looking forward to that. And uh, Dr. Michael Cox's last Messiah Sing with us as he is announced his intention to uh, retire. So Dr. Cox, we are definitely looking forward to celebrating the Messiah again with you in leadership yet one more time. Uh, very, very grateful for that long uh, tradition here at Broadway. And then finally, let me say one other thing. Um, we're 63% on the way of, to our pledge goal of $1.7 million. Um, 63% is great, but it's not yet 100%, and we need your help. And so please make note that if you have not turned in your pledge card, your intention to give, this is how we set our budget, and we really need the help. And let me just say a, a, a little word here at the year end. This is the time of year where we always, before December, kind of start struggling for money. And uh, let me just be very clear, it's happened again. The, the, the annual tradition has happened and we, we need to make sure that if you have pledged and fallen a little behind on your contributions, now would be the time to catch up. We would appreciate it very much uh, because we, we want to be in a good, strong, sound financial position uh, to do all the wonderful ministries that we do. So I'm very, very grateful for this and I just thank you in advance for your passion about this place. And let me say one final thing. I know I said I was going to say one final thing a minute ago, but let me say one final thing for real this time. On Thanksgiving, sadly, uh, we were uh, the target of uh, an, a, an act of uh, aggression. And someone took a rock and threw it through the glass door of our community center. And uh, Jay Finley, who is our facilities manager, came up here on Thanksgiving Day, left his Thanksgiving table to come up here and to board that thing up to make sure it was safe and secure for all of our families that are staying with us. We do not believe that this person uh, is a, a danger to our church any further or uh, to our community that's staying here. Uh, but I just wish you, want you to know, Jay Finley is a servant of God. And he does all kinds of things in small ways that most of us never know because we just assume that the lights turn on and, uh, you know, it's 
hot or cold in here, whatever it needs to be, all of those kinds of things. But he left his table at Thanksgiving lunch to come down here and get the job done. And if you see him, you tell him his pastor is very, very <laughs> thankful because if I had been the one who was left to do that, we would have been in trouble. So let me just say that. Um, I would have uh, been more than you know, willing in heart, but less than able in hand. So uh, really, really grateful for that good servant. And I look out here and I see a lot, a lot of other ones as well. God bless you. Depart now, beloved, with the Spirit of God and Christ in you. For the world needs your light and your hope and your deep, deep courage. So go and be brave. Be strong, be kind, and be love. Always be love.